Hi, welcome back to Unsightly Opinions. If you're new, my name's Tamara, and today we are going to be talking about all things organization. Organization is something I am incredibly passionate about because it has made a tremendous difference to my life. As a blind person, organization has made my life possible. It has made me functional. When my space isn't organized, I can't find anything and I can't do my job. So. I have learned some really inexpensive tips, tricks, and tools that I'm going to pass along to you today so that you can make your life hassle-free and organized. We're going to start out in the four big areas that I think people struggle. Closet, then we're going to move into my kitchen and pantry, then we're going to move into my office and hobby space, and finally we're going to end up in the bathroom. And we're going to talk about how to keep all of those spaces organized and give you some tools so that you can make it work for your space. Without further ado, let's dive in. Let's start in the closet. I know this is a big one for a lot of people having difficulty staying organized and keeping things where they go. There are lots of different organization techniques, but my first tip is going to be pick an organization technique that works for you and stick to it. If it's easy enough for you to remember, it's going to be functional in the long term. For me, starting in my short hang, which is what I access most, I have everything organized from white to black. I have my colored things in between, and all of my shorthand gets organized by color. If you prefer organizing by zone, for example, having all of your blazers and jackets in one zone, having all of your blouses and tops in one zone, and all of your sweaters and shrugs in one zone, that works too. But for me, because I have a difficult time interpreting color, I like to keep everything organized in its color family. That way, if I forget what color one thing is, I know what the item next door is and I can infer by that, even if I've forgotten what color it is, what color the top next to it's gonna be. Tip number two is the things that you use most keep close to you. Make them the most accessible at waist or chest level. Because I change my tops way more than I change my bottoms, my tops are on top and my pants are on the bottom. Again, I really like using these hanging pant racks because it gives me the ability to feel everything I've got without needing to paw through a drawer or make things a mess. In terms of things that I use even less, they go up high and farther away from me. As I come up to the top of my closet, I have a row of boxes. And these boxes house different things. You may be asking yourself if you can read my labels, why does she have a giant box of corsets and costume accessories? I'm a costumer in my spare time, and this was the space that made the most sense to store those things when I'm doing historical and recreation gowns. But anyways, things that I use a little bit less, like my scarves, which is in the middle container here, I'll bring it down, are again organized by both type and color. So my pashminas are organized in a file folder so I can feel all the way along the top and they're organized by color. And then any of my miscellaneous scarves, usually my silk scarves, or things that aren't going to fold as nicely, are in the other half, separated so I can keep track of where those are depending on what I'm looking for. As I come across my closet here, you get into my shoes, purses, and hats. I love shoes, and again, keeping things open so that I could access them easily, be able to reach my hand in and find them, keep them organized by color, was really helpful for me. I'm not a big purse person, but I thought it might be nice just to be able to reach in and grab what I need when I'm going out for that fancy occasion. And then above that, I have three of the hats that I use most often. As an albino person, my burn time is incredibly short, so being able to grab a hat and go, really important. Here's where I have a blended zone. I didn't really have a space to put my nail polish, so it just sits on top of my sunglasses. But it's close enough to my vanity that it's near where I use it every time. That goes on to tip number three. Try and keep things proximal to where you use the most. So if you're always doing your hair in the bathroom, keep your hair stuff in the bathroom. If you're always doing your nails in the bedroom on your vanity, keep your nail polish in the bedroom near the vanity. And I keep my sunglasses here because this right side of my closet is more of the accessory zone. I've got my scarves, my hats, my shoes, my purses, so my sunglasses are also here. And then coming over to my vanity, which I personally consider part of my closet because I consider makeup to be an, quote, accessory, I keep all of my lipsticks in an organizer. I can't remember if I picked this organizer up at the dollar store or at Walmart. I know this one to the left here that keeps all of my everyday makeup, definitely got that at the dollar store. And I got this little jar that I keep all of my makeup brushes in from the dollar store. So again, I didn't spend $40 on acrylic makeup organizers. I just got what was cheap 
and what worked for what I needed to use. When it comes to organizing in drawers, I love the file folder method. For years and years and years, I tried to keep things organized by type in just piles of folded clothes. And it took maybe about a week before it was all messy and I couldn't find anything again. So the file folder method is where everything is folded normally and then you fold it again so you see the top of every single item in your drawer. This is my sweater drawer, so over on the left hand side I keep my casual sweaters, in the middle I keep my colored sweaters, and on the right I keep my neutral sweaters, black, white, and gray. And that's just the organization and color technique or color palette that I use for organizing my drawers. If you go down into the next drawer down, this is my loungewear and pajamas. Pajamas stay on the right, and I generally just keep them piled because I grab whatever's clean on top. And then I have my sweatpants, my t-shirts, my workout wear, my capris, and my other workout tops and sweaters. And I can keep them all organized in zones and in rows, and I can easily feel, am I in the left row, the middle row, and the right row? And I know everything that's in that row, so I can just feel along, find what I need, pull it right out, and it doesn't mess up anything else in the drawer. Lastly, I wanna talk about laundry organization. My laundry bins have four different types, so I can immediately separate them as soon as I take my clothes off in the evening and make sure I don't spend 40 minutes once a week trying to sort laundry into different piles. It gets pre-sorted the moment I take off my clothes, and then as soon as a bin gets full, I can feel that it's full and I just dump it straight in the wash. My bins are all labeled with braille and print. I like to label everything with braille and print, even though I can't read the print, just so that if I have somebody sighted around, they know what the bins mean as well. I know I've mentioned that I use braille labels a lot, but for my blind and visually impaired friends who don't use braille, there are still many options. There's large print label makers, which can create text in a variety of colors and sizes, and I know many blind people who use puff paint or raised dot patterns to keep things straight. We've now migrated into my kitchen. I'm sorry if the audio sounds horrible today. I'm moving into a lot of different spaces that have very strange acoustics, and my microphone did not want to cooperate. So when I think about kitchen organization, the first thing that I think about is what is most practical. I want to do as little reaching and bending as possible. So the things that I use most often, again, should be kind of waist to chest high. Again, at that height, you're less likely to drop things, you're less likely to lose things, and you have easy accessibility to whatever you need to access. I also want to mention, as a blind person, keeping countertops clear and clutter-free and keeping things away from edges is vital to avoid breaking and knocking things over. Just to the left of my stove, I have a prep area. It's very small and not very practical for actually doing any prep work. So instead, I keep my bread maker here so it's out of the way and I'm not bumping it while it's making bread and all of the tools that I use when I'm on the stove. Anything that I wanna use while I'm working on the stove, so a flipper or a spoon, I can easily reach over and grab the next utensil that I need without moving out of position. And I've just housed these in a vase that I found at the dollar store. So again, didn't need to break the budget, but very practical for how I use my kitchen. The drawer just to the left of my stove is very small, so this is where I keep my dishcloths and all of the stuff that I need to use when I'm handling hot things my oven mitts, my hot pads, anything like that that I need to grab while I'm close to the hot stuff, right next to the hot stuff. Behind me, I have a Billy bookshelf. Again, very close proximity to the stove where I'll be using it most often. And this was a really practical solution to a small, unusable pantry. I do have a pantry behind me here, but because the shelves are very deep and narrow, it made it difficult to keep organized. I like to buy my spices and things that I use at the kitchen in bulk, so keeping them in small jars and keeping them organized in a way that I can find them quickly is really useful for me. So I modified this Billy bookshelf and we built some extra shelves to store so we could layer the different spices and things that we use. At the top, I keep all of my oils and on the shelf, I have both print and braille labels. Robbie and I cook in here frequently. So everything has its spot and everything goes back in its spot. In my kitchen, drawer organizers are king. I use a cutlery organizer and I keep different things. This is an expanding one from Walmart. I love it. I think it was only about $12. It's made out of bamboo. And I can store all of my different utensils that I use frequently in their own homes. They can stay where they need to go, never lose anything. My EpiPen, because I have allergies and this is the safest, most common place that I will have in a reaction. So that has to stay easily accessible and then all of my opening tools. 
These are not in a swanky bin. I just repurposed a takeout container because I couldn't find something the right size, but when I do, I'll replace this with something nicer. But for now, it's entirely functional. When I go into my pantry, I organize things in zones. There's this beautiful little spice rack that was built in and I've made full use of that. All of my spices have braille labels on them and they're organized alphabetically so I can find them easily. The stuff that's up high is stuff that I don't access as frequently. It's usually my bulk items that I use to refill my containers. So my extra rice, my extra lentils, extra noodles, extra macaroni, whatever it may be, it's usually, and it's in a container so I can take the whole container down, bring it on the counter, and take out the one thing I need and put it all back. So I'm not dealing with 50 plastic bags that are all falling on each other. They're housed nicely in a basket. Underneath that, I keep my starchy things. So my rices and my pastas, again, organized by type so I can easily find them. Below that, I keep my sauces and soups. On the right hand side, I keep my breakfast foods. Up top, because I bake a little bit less, is my baking goods, my snack shelf, and then again, the closer you get to the floor is more bulk items, heavy things that I might break if I drop them, and my soups and heavy cans. So because everything has a home, I can be really functional and efficient in this kitchen. Everything is exactly where I need it to be. So the things that you're using most often are easiest to get at. You're gonna never lose anything or have any frustrations in the kitchen again. Let's move on to the next room. We're now in my office and crafting area. This is probably the smallest space in my house. It's only about five feet wide by maybe eight or nine feet long with an angled wall on one side. So it's really difficult to make things work in here, but we found a way. I like corner desks because they're really useful for maximizing space when you don't have a lot of room. So I have a corner desk here. I have my office desk next to it and I have my crafting desk and my little set of Alex drawers behind it. That's given me a lot of storage in this very, very small space and made it very functional. I'm gonna go through this room very quickly because it's gonna look like I'm repeating myself, but anything that has a color, anything that needs a specific spot is usually braille labeled. Almost every drawer in this space has some form of drawer organizer and that really helps me keep things separate when I need to look for it as a blind person. It's all too easy for me to go pawing through a drawer and then everything gets messed up, even if it was really organized before. I find having those dividers, having those separate spaces makes it way easier to keep things where they need to go. If it's going to be obvious for somebody who's sighted, I just use braille labels. For example, on my thread wall, all of the colors are braille labeled, but a sighted person could just see that so they could know where to put it back. If somebody wouldn't necessarily know, like all of my bins, since I sew with my cousin quite frequently, she needs to use this space as well, and I wanted to make it accessible for anyone who'd be in here. Bonus spot on this noisy tour, I have a shelving unit in my mechanical space where I keep all of my cleaning and miscellaneous working, constructing DIY tools. So right where I use them most, I have all of my cleaning supplies. On the right I have my vacuum parts, in the middle I have my brushes and rags, on the left I have all of the cleaning supplies that I use. I find using consistent bins, all of these I got, they are the same thing, they're the same style, they're the same color from my local dollar store in two different sizes so I could store things that I had a lot of in big bins and things that I didn't have so much of in smaller bins. And that way they all had exactly the right amount of space to store what I needed to store in them. Final stop on our tour, we are now in the bathroom. Bathrooms are really difficult because people often have a lot of stuff. I try and organize based on how I use the space. Things that are bulk or extra that I really don't use go in a bin at the very back of my cupboard. Things that are maybe extra or little appliances, like a water pick, go on the right at the back. And things that I use really frequently, like Q-tips and other things, like hairsprays, gels, other tools, sit in their own little tray at the front so I can reach in, feel without knocking them over, and grab what I need quickly. And that's basically it. If you can find something that works for you, use that. I like using little dividers and little bins. I didn't break the bank. I used little containers that I got as gift boxes. I used things from the dollar store. And where I couldn't find exactly what I needed for a space, I went to Walmart. You don't need to spend $500 at the container store. 
it's really easy to do on a budget. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you took something away from it that you can bring into your own life to make it more organized and hassle-free. If you enjoy content like this, please don't forget to subscribe, hit those bells and buttons, leave me a comment, like and share. And if you want to keep up to date with what's going on in between uploads, I have an accessible Twitch stream Sunday nights, 7.30 Mountain Standard Time with occasional Tuesday streams. And I have my other social media accounts linked in the description down below. Bye for now.